All right, okay, okay, all right. Greetings, my fellow squishy blobs of cosmic powder. My name's Hans. Cal Hanzo to this tribe of plants, father of dragons, builder of teal bricks, and berserk for Legos. This is part two video of my seven wide buses, and this time it's a US style school bus. So grab your backpack and your super awesome retro 80s style lunchbox, and let's ride the cool bus to the origin story. All right, so before I begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to those who are new to my channel. Let me quickly update you on some important details. I'm currently in the beginning phases of building a Lego city named Paradise the City, a tropical city in the year 2060. Go ahead and check out my table design video for more details on that. And in Paradise the City in the year 2060, all vehicles are electric drive with futuristic solid state batteries and supercapacitors. So this bus right here, being in the year 2060, is going to be an electric bus. And also in Paradise the City in the year 2060, all vehicles are fully autonomous with full self-driving capabilities. Now Paradise City is not your everyday average city that you see that exists in today's times. It is in the future and it's highly advanced. And one of the things that's really advanced about it is that it doesn't have traditional streets. The main way people get about in Paradise City is through walkable pathways but there's also these little scooter hideways which small lightweight vehicles and scooters can ride around on. But there's also an underground autonomous roadway system which allows service vehicles and delivery vehicles, you know, like garbage and garbage trucks and emergency vehicles. And these autonomous roadways don't allow regular civilians to drive around down there. It's not meant for that. But this electric autonomous school bus is allowed to drive down in the autonomous roadways. And in fact, Paradise City has a public mode of transportation called the Hyperpod system. It's a fusion of ideas. Hyperloop meets Boring Tunnel meets Minority Report. And I definitely recommend go watch my video on the Hyperloop for full details on that. So public bus transportation isn't really a thing in Paradise City. It's not really necessary. So why would I put a school bus in Paradise City? Well, like most cities, the outer edges of the city is less developed than, say, the core of the city. So I think any kids who live out on the outer reaches of the city where the Hyperpod system and the autonomous roadways aren't fully developed, that's where this electric school bus comes in. All right, two other things to note is my protocols of scale. One of the reasons why I made this bus to be seven studs wide is because I have a protocol of scale. And in my protocol of scale, buses are seven studs wide. There's not enough room inside a six stud wide vehicles to effectively pull off a compactified minifigure scale bus. And so seven stud wide is part of my protocol. Now I go into full detail on my protocols of scale if you go watch my autonomous tram bus video, I go into full detail on all that, where I show an example of every type of vehicle going all the way from single passenger micro cars all the way up to trains. My other protocol is the protocols of tire size. And so for every type of vehicle, I have a particular type of Lego tire that goes for that particular vehicle. You wanna see the full details on that? Go check out my Palace Cinema Limbo video. All right, and this is actually a remock. It originally was the bus in 60154 bus station set. And I know what you're thinking, man, this school bus looks absolutely nothing like that original bus in 60154. And I totally agree with you. It's been changed so extensively that I think pretty much only the side windows, maybe a, a couple of these yellow bricks, and then the roof on top are from the original set. Everything else is all brand new to this uh, mock. So whether you want to call it a remock or it's just a completely brand new bus, either way it works for me. And I actually built this just a few weeks ago as I was doing my planning for the part one video of the two buses that I show in there. And if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out where I've got the double decker tourist bus and just a regular city bus. So on my city bus, I had changed it from red to the medium azure color. And then right after that, then I actually decided to remock the yellow bus. And as I was remocking it, I was like, you know, I've always wanted to do a school bus. This bus is yellow. Why not? Let's give it a shot. And this is what I came up with. Yeah. And like I say in all my videos, I'm excited to say that electric school buses are becoming a thing nowadays. More and more cities in the US are starting to invest in electric school buses. And some of the main manufacturers of electric school buses are the same manufacturers that have always been making school buses here in the United States. The Thomas School Bus Manufacturer, and they are now making electric buses. We've got the Bluebird Bus Manufacturer has already been selling electric school buses. And the bus brand Lion has also been selling a number of school buses. And in the beginning of 2021, I believe IC Bus Manufacturing brand has just started supplying orders of electric school buses. So yeah, electric school buses in year 2021, it's a thing. And in the year 2060, they're gonna be everywhere. Now the nice thing about electric school buses is they're quiet. 
some of the benefits electric school bus drivers have been happy about is just how quiet they are. And that allows them to be able to communicate and listen to what's going on with the students a lot easier. School buses with diesel engines are very loud and rumbly. It's a, a lot of extra noise for them to speak over. The other positive reviews that are coming from both parents and children are the fact that they don't have to inhale a lot of that diesel pollution coming out of the tailpipe. Anytime a bus comes to a stop, if you happen to have the bus windows open, and there were even some bus manufacturers that had handicapped ramps here in the back, which was near the exhaust tailpipe. And now these buses can accommodate handicapped students without them having to inhale a bunch of uh, diesel exhaust, you know, as it takes time to load them up. Another pro to these electric buses is a lot of times these electric buses are parked for most of the day and not being used. But because of the massive size of the batteries that run along the bottom of the bus, these buses can hold a significant amount of power and what schools can do is during peak hours of high electricity rates, what they can do is actually use the buses to supply electricity back into the grid to help power the school so that way the school doesn't have to pay high energy prices. All right, so first things first, as I do with all my industrial vehicles, I did the Speed Champion wheel conversion. I think this is the perfect wheel size for industrial size vehicles. And of course, in January, of 2021, we got the 40448 vintage car, and these wheel vendors came the first time in the teal color. This isn't your typical US style bus coloring. Usually, these buses are primarily yellow with some black color coordination. But of course, Paradisa City is a tropical city, and it uses a bit more tropical colors, and I love teal, so why not? Let's have teal on there. The other reason, too, is that the bus in its original form was actually a yellow bus with green on the bottom. And since teal is technically a blend of blue and green mixed together to create teal, so by changing the green to teal in this way, I'm upgrading it to my favorite color, upgrading it to a more tropical color for Paradisa City, and I'm still keeping with the original style that the uh, original bus was. And then to give it an extra bit of style, I added the bright yellowish green color stripe right there at the top. And the green stripe actually gets interrupted by the, the wheel fender there. And I thought it would have been really cool if I could have used this piece to kind of carry that green stripe over the top of it and then this guy would kind of go over the top of that uh, but I didn't have this piece in solid yellow so if I ever get this in solid yellow I'm definitely gonna try that out so moving over here to the front I've got my autonomous driving sensor right there and this is capable of fully driving the car the bus driver doesn't even need to do any driving he's primarily to sort of chaperone the students bus does all the driving and stuff if there ever is a situation where the bus driver needs to take over control of the bus it's definitely possible for him to do that. I've got my futuristic headlights right there using the trans neon yellow color as well as a bar of headlights going across the top there. I'm using these trans neon fluorescent orange as hazard lights so every time the bus has to make a stop to pick up some children these hazard lights will flash. I gave it a nice little chin spoiler down here on the bottom using a tile and some wedge plates. And then since it's a sleeker windshield, I decided to just go ahead and give the bus a short nose to it. So US style school buses usually either come with a flat nose or they have a full truck nose to them. I gave this a nose, but it's a little bit shorter than full on diesel truck nose. I really liked how it turned out. American style school buses have these flashing red lights up here at the top every time they make a stop. I went ahead and added the caution black and white stripes on there. And up here at the top, I added the one by one cheese wedge slopes. And instead of these being mirrors, these are the cameras that look at the blind spots. Moving over here to the back, I've got more caution hazard stripes right there. I've got my tail lights stretching across the back and I'm using the six wide windshield back here. And then up top, I've got the red hazard lights as well as the trans neon orange hazard lights. And of course, as you can see, it's a fully loaded school bus. I've got actually seating for seven passengers in there. And as you would see in real life, the door entrance is slightly lowered down and the door is supported by, by one of those uh, Z bracket bricks. I've also got a trans blue one by two in there, and, and that's just uh, the futuristic glowing light on the side of the bus, and it helps indicate how full of a charge that the bus has. And the bus being seven studs wide, and the windshield being six studs wide, I'm using some jumper plates to center the windshield. And I'm also using these tile plates right there. I've got the quarter circle tile plate right there. So obviously right here on the side, you got a little bit of a lip right there, but I think it came out really nice looking. So let's go to the inside. All right, and the whole roof comes off, and, and the way that I've got it attached is by using these 1x3 jumper plates right there. So this is the interior of the bus. All right, so here's the bus driver. This is his computer screen for controlling the bus. 
But again, the bus does all the driving all by itself. And he pretty much uh, is just the kind of chaperone and make sure that the kids are behaving themselves and not doing mean pranks or bullying and all that stuff. And this is a bus full of high schoolers. And here we've got a young lady that is very unhappy. These two guys are not very nice dudes and are saying some mean jokes to her. This girl is totally ignoring everything. This kid is trying to get in on the conversation. And this girl is on her phone. And of course, being in the future, in the year 2060, kids are dyeing their hair a lot more these days. And if you see my part one video, I'm uh, doing the same exact thing. I've got the aisle way, which is on one side of the bus, and all the seats are on the other side of the bus. That is, considering the compactified scale of things, seven studs wide is just not quite enough to allow for a middle aisle with two different seats. And if I was to stagger and zigzag the seating, it's not as an efficient way for minifigures to get to their seats. So the aisle way is three studs wide, each seat is two studs wide, and it worked out quite nice. All right, and this is how I pretty much start off the chassis on these buses. I've got a two stud wide plate in there with a one stud wide plate, and I've got it set up so that it runs the entire length of the bus. I've got two stud wide plates on either side. Now for the bus door, uh, this is where I was mentioning the Z bracket. I like to call these Z brackets. And on this second layer of plates, this is actually a six by six plate. It is almost the full width of the bus, but then on the opposite side is a one by plate. I'm using some 2x2 two two bricks to level up the seats. As you can see, the window height is exactly where I like to have it, right about arm height on the minifigures. On some of the LEGO buses, the windows are way down right above the wheel, and then you could see the minifigure's legs, which wasn't something that I really cared for. I'm using some angle plates right here to mount the rear window. And there is a little bit of uh, air gap right there. And this notch right here does look a little bit odd. But given the fact that we don't have seven stud wide windows, I think this is a good compromise. So I gotta say, I really like how this bus turned out. I've always been curious to see LEGO make a minifigure scale school bus for the city theme. They made school buses and other themes, such as the bus in the hidden side, but that's at a completely different scale than the scale of the vehicles in city themes. So to me, that didn't count. A lot of other LEGO enthusiasts have made some pretty awesome LEGO buses, and this is my own twist to it. I'm super stoked with how it turned out. It actually came out a bit better than I was expecting. It had more of the school bus look to it. All right, if you guys liked the school bus, if you liked this video, go ahead and smash the like button and leave some comments. The more likes this video gets and the more comments it gets, it lets the YouTube algorithm know to, to promote this video onto other LEGO enthusiasts. I do have some good news as far as Paradisa City. One of the things that was holding me up is the remodeling that had been planned for this home and it actually started a week ago and already has been some great progress. I'm actually planning to build the first set of tables in about uh, three to four weeks. However, unfortunately due to the remodeling that's going on right now, all progress on the Grand Emporium has come to a halt. Although once I'm able to resume on that, I should be able to get that together pretty quickly. I've only got about 20% more to go on, on building that and then I'll be able to get back to building my apartment high-rise. Alrighty guys, that's all I got for now and I'll catch you guys later.